بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إذا وقعت الواقعة ليس لوقعتها كاذبة خافضة الرحيم الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا ومولانا أبا القاسم المصطفى محمد اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد وعجل فرج وعلى أهل بيتي الطيبين الطاهرين ولعنة الله على عدائهم إلى قيوم يوم الدين Welcome to Journey to the Hereafter Lesson 9 We're going to be covering verses 35 to 45 We are talking about three groups Surah Al-Waqa'a, which we said is the surah of, some also mention it, surah of qina, of abundance, or um, to be translated as the surah of richness, or for, if a person wants to become, leave poverty, it is a surah that they recite every night, they won't have faqa, they won't have poverty. Or we see that the traditions talk about surah al being the surah that if a person recites, won't be of the ghafilin, won't be of those that neglect or are neglectful, the forgetful. What is the relationship between being forgetful and Surah Al-Waqa'a? Because Surah Al-Waqa'a gives a very accurate depiction, a clear depiction of the hereafter and the different categories of people. So when a person recites this surah, immediately comes to their mind that, look, there are three categories of people, as the foremost, then there are al-ashab al-maymana, the uh, ashab, the companions that are of uh, the good fate, the good fortune. Also, you know, we, we call them the ashab al-yameen also, and in, in the surah it continues, it calls them ashab al-yameen, meaning they'll get their books on the deed on from the right, and Ashab al Mash'ama or Ashab al Shimat. And those that are of ill fortune, those that get their book of deeds from the left. So each very organized Quran first mentions these three groups, then talks about what will happen in the rewards and the consequences of becoming one of these three groups. So it is very encouraging for us to recite the Holy Quran and to keep it as a constant reminder that, look, I am here for a purpose, and my purpose is to build my hereafter. And if I am not careful, I could be of Ashab al I could be, you know, the people of the hellfire, the ill fortune. Before we can you know, start with the uh, people of the ill, you know, Ill fortune, Ashab al Shemal, the people of the left, we have a few verses, I believe, one, two, a yeah, few verses left that talk a bit about the description of those that are Ashab al Yameen. So, Ashab al Yameen, there are still more you know, descriptions about what happens for them, what they have. So, we're going to read here Inna and Sha'na Hunna, Insha'a. First, we talked about Farsh. I don't know if you remember, but last week we talked about Farsh, that the Ashab al Yameen will be on Farsh. And we said that Farsh or Rag can be either interpreted as the exact, you know, interpretation of a Rag, you know, or Rag could mean a Kenaya or it could mean indirectly that is talking about spouses. So both of them were Furush and Marfu'a. And when we talk about those Furush, those Rags, some say that is actual real rugs, or some say it means you know spouses. So those that say it means spouses, even though you know when you talk about fash, fash is usually rugs. They say that one of the reasons maybe that it helps them determine that, or to think that it means that, is that because they want to have a connection between when it talked about hurul ain, the ladies of paradise before. And now, it talks about it now, it wants it to be connected, those verses to be connected from before. But the problem is, they were said, mentioned many verses before. So I don't know how much of a connection that is. 
it's not like it was the for very for, you know first there's the verse right before farsh so it would connect so anyways they say that just the fact that it's stated there it helps connect talking about hurul ain or some say you know it can just be rugs so those that connect it they say well it's connected to here so inna ansha'na hunna insha'a indeed we have produced the women of paradise in a new creation so when you look at this verse and you see what Allama says, it says that, in other words, we have made them special and giving them a special upbringing. This suggests that they do not change with you know age or with passage of time. Um, here, I you know I told my Quran talks about the possibility of this verse when you say insha inna insha. And Sha'nahunna in Sha'a, we have produced the women of paradise in a new creation. He says there's a possibility here that this could refer to the spouses that a person had in this world. And the fact that they will be in a new creation. So in a way that will be, you know, obviously with the you know maximum level of Kamal and you know perfection of, of paradise, that that spouse were turning for them to become one of the best, you know, ladies of paradise, for example, or become a lady of paradise. So he says that possibility, and when it means that we have produced the woman of paradise in a new creation, meaning that that same wife, which, you know, obviously ages, or whatever, especially when people get old, and they get old, but then it is a new creation in the best form. Uh, it comes from from the paradise, or it can also mean the Ain, the ladies of paradise, and it can also mean them as well. So inna and sha'na hunna insha'a. Indeed, we have produced the women of paradise. You know, and what a creation, and in, in a new creation. Fajalna hunna abkara, and we made them virgins, uruban atraba, devoted to their husbands. So urub. When you look at that word, Orob is from Aruba, you know, and it means in a way that there's love, you know, between them. So, or the devout, you know, so there's that connection. It's not just, you know, uh, meeting them and saying there's this connection, there's this love between them, these, these spouses, Oroban. So it comes from Aruba. And atrab, atraban comes from tarb, which means similar. So atraban, they say, you know, maybe possibly similar of age. So oroban is that love between them. Atraban means they're equal in age, possibly because if someone is, usually it's not always like this, I told them, my Karam says, but possibly that, when people are in the same age, they relate more. Um, they're the same, you know, uh, category of, of, you know, w w the way that maybe the memories they have, what, you know, that connection they can have with their peers. Usually there's a better bond between, you know, peers than, say, somebody that is way older or someone that is way younger, for example. So that's one possibility that they, they are, have that age and maybe it matches Uruban, that affection and that connection. Better. Let's see here what Allama Tabatawai says. This suggests that they do not change with time. So inna insha'na hunna insha'a. They do not change with time. They're you know they don't age, and everything you know how exactly how they were from the beginning. They'll be in the same way. This suggests that they do not change. So when God says and made them virgins, this means that no matter how you know what happens, or, you know uh, what. Um, you know, acts happen there, they remain virgins, as you know, Allah Ta'ala is saying. Loving of a like, so Uruban, we say is loving of a like age, Atraban, in other words, loving of their spouses attracted to them and of a similar age to them. Ashabul Yameen, the companions of the right. The, this is for those that have worked hard. These are for those that didn't seek corruption and seek immodesty and were chaste in this world. So they get these things. 
and they were pious and good. So again, the heaven of Islam in Quran is the heaven that you work for. It's not a heaven that you're born in and you're entitled just because I'm born in this you know, lineage or I'm born in this religion. It is a religion of, of working and preserving your faith and you know, having good action. The tradition mentions that in this world, we will seek dirham and dinar, gold and silver. But in the hereafter, we will be seeking Amal al-Saleh, good action. So the Islam, the heaven of, of, of Islam is a very is, is a fair heaven. It's a heaven that whoever worked for it gets it. And if you didn't work for it, you don't get it. And if you work in the wrong way and you oppress and you violate, violate others' rights, well, you will be punished. Very, alhamdulillah, fair religion that we have. And that there's no uh, you know, benefit or just because you believe it, you're, you're Muslim, you're entitled to heaven. No, even a Muslim can say, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, and can be punished in the hereafter. That's what we say over and over again. It's not that the punishment is only for the, non, the disbelievers or the non Muslims. The punishment can also be for the uh, fusaq of the Muslimin, the corrupt of the Muslimin. The ashab al yamin, thullatun min al awwaleen. So there are the companions of the right. Here, thullatun min al awwaleen, thulla, you know, the original meaning is a bundled or gathered wool. Thulla is wool. So it's used as a jama'a, for example, group. We said that this doesn't mean that the Prophet's nation is lower than the others. It just means its quantity. It's saying that the quantity of sabiqun of them is, is fewer. But obviously the sabiqun of the Prophets are the highest. Of our Prophet Muhammad is the highest. Because of them is Imam Ali a.s. for example. That's why we said this surah is the surah of Imam Ali a.s. Some say. So... The quanti- quality is higher from the sabiqun of the Prophet's ummah, but the quantity is lower. But for ashab al-yameen, it's equal. There'll be a company from the former, and there'll be a company from the later. Remember, thulla was used in the Quran against qalil. So we understand that there's a large group, for example. There's a company, a lot. So a multitude from the former ones and a multitude from the later. The meaning of this is clear based on what we have already have said above. These verses show that the people of the right hand contain a multitude of the believers from the Prophet's nation, just as it contains a multitude of earlier nations. By contrast, the foremost, the ones who were brought near, contain fewer members of the Prophet's nation, our Prophet's nation, and then they do then then they do the members of earlier nations. And why is that? Maybe the tests and trials were harder. Um, maybe more failed. Obviously, I don't know. Uh, but the sabiqun, the sabiqun, uh, were you know more from the other nations. Now we get into so that's done. The paradise section is done, and. You remember there are two emotions that a person has. There's the emotion of you know hope and you know, desiring heaven, and that's a way that is very constructive for us, the hope and desire. And you read these verses, and you say, Inshallah, Allah gives us heaven. Inshallah, we do pray right now that Allah gives us these rewards. Now there's the other nur and light of fear, of khawf. And that we have to have both of these. And we see when the Imams speak to Allah, they speak about both heaven and hell, that fear they have of it, of hell and the love of a desire for heaven. So we need to be between al khawf and al raja. And you see again, Quran is so balanced, it's so logical. How it talks about three categories and then later each one A, B, C, then it describes A, then it describes B, then it describes C. Now we're at C, the last group. And 
talking about you know the descriptions so that we can have fear, so we can be balanced. And look, don't think that this heaven is going to be for everyone. You know, uh, don't think that it is, it's, it's, we're going to also give you descriptions so that you can fear God, you can fear the wrath of God. And fearing God obviously means that you fear what you have done. You fear that God will not forgive you for what you have done. So we'll start with this section, inshallah. This is, um, so we're going to be do, doing verse right now, 41. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Wa ashabu shimal. Ma ashabu shimal. That God separate us from them. And the companions of the left. So we said once, or Surah Waqa says, Mash'ama ill fortune. Now it uses shimal, meaning left. Being left handed, there is no problem with being left handed. To eat with the left hand physically might be my crew. To eat, you know, pick things up left handed, that could be my crew. But to write with, you know, with the left hand or those that are left handed, it doesn't mean, you know, Obviously, I think everyone knows this, but it doesn't mean to be left-handed. It means you're going to go into the hellfire. It means those that get their book from the left. You know, on the Day of Judgment, the book of Adits. Ashabu shimal ma ashabu shimal And the companions of the left. What are the companions of the left? Fi samumin wahamim. So this verse 42. They will be in scorching fire. Samum wahamim. So the grammatical, let's read this. So the grammatical structure of this verse is similar to the people of the right. The question is intended to express horror and amazement. You know, ashabu shumal, ma ashabu shumal. It's a question, but it's for horror here. And what about these people? It's supposed to scare us. It's supposed to cause fear in us. Note that here as well, the people of ill fortune have been swapped with the people of left hand, same way, because they get their deeds from the left. So 42 and 44, it says, Samum, amid infernal, you know, mayasma or Samum, and boiling water, and the shadow of a dense black smoke, wadhillin min hamum. So we have three descriptions here. One, the scorching fire, Samum, and Hamim, scalding water, and, you know, a shade of black smoke. Now, when we think about, you know, these punishments of hellfire, and you see how water can be, you know, burn us sometimes more than other things when it's super hot, or even, uh, you know, other aspects of water. And fire itself can burn us as well. Inshallah, not us, but for your, your enemies. And a shade of black smoke. But now there's shade. So when a person comes to learn about the shade of the hereafter, you say, okay, well, they have shade. That's good, right? You know, you saw on a very hot summer day, you go under shade. It's very good. But this shade, this la baradin wa la kareem, is a shade that neither cool nor beneficial. It is not cool or beneficial. Interesting narration, we said, uh, you know, when a person, you know, according to Mufassirin, some, some of the verses that say that everyone will enter hell, they say that when you pass the bridge, the narrow bridge and the Salat, everyone will enter hell. And they bring the, you know, hellfire with a thousand chains. And we're supposed to pass this Surat, and some pass very fast. And, but it says, according to some of us, saying everyone enters hell. Everyone enters it. Even the Prophet enters it just to pass, and nothing happens because he passes so fast. And the believer, you know, that hell doesn't burn them, they just go through it. So according to this, you know, these type of uh, commentaries, Quran, all of us will be seeing this and going through it. Uh, the, the, this, you know, this, this fire. But the hell there will speak in, in the tradition it has, and hell speaks and says to, you know, uh, there'll be one scream, there'll be this, the screams of those that are being burnt while they're passing or they're passing very slowly, you know. And then there'll be the scream of hellfire, and, and hellfire will yell and say to the mu'min and the believer, hurry up and pass because you're cooling me down. 
you're cooling me down because the believer doesn't burn. But we will see this, and at least, you know, we will at least see it. And some of us we will enter it. We'll enter it. Inshallah, nothing will happen to us. So this shade, la baradin wa la kirim, is not the shade, this dhil will not be cool or nor be, you know, beneficial. On the Day of Judgment, there is shade, because it's very hot in the Day of Judgment at that time. Uh, sorry, these, you know, yeah. So in the Day of Judgment, there'll be shade, and that will be the shade, you can say, of sadaqa, of charity, the shade that you provided to someone else, you gave them shade, you help them out in this world, then in the Day of Judgment, you'll have shade. That will be beneficial. But in hellfire, that dhil min yahmum, la baradin wa la kareem, it will be not cool and not beneficial. So some, some can mean from a, a type of wind, a very hot wind. So here you see a scorching fire, a hot wind. It's extremely hot wind. And that... Um, it's a hot wind that does masam, or, or it comes from, say, you can say, which is masam, which means it, it's a, there's a hot, such a hot wind that it enters all the parts of the body. I don't know if you ever see it's a cold wind that gets your entire body. It's a hot wind that gets in the entire part of the body, according to the logat of the word. So therefore, we see that this, you know, samum is actually this type of fire or this you know, t type of wind, of hot wind or fire that enters every part of someone's body. Samu. Hamim, which means something that is very hot. And here it means water, boiling, boiling water. That we see, you know, uh, in other um, verses of the Quran say, Yusabbu min fawgh ru'usihim al hamim. You know, in, in some of the verses of Quran, in Surah Al Hajj, verse 19, that this is poured on top of their heads, Ru'usahim al Hamim, this boiling water is poured on top of their heads. May Allah protect us from this you know, punishment. So, Yahmum isn't the same thing. So, we see that the description from the Loga is that. Um, this is, you know, what it could cause the, the, for, for the, and this is what it could cause for the unbeliever, for the sinner. Innahum kanu qabla dhalika mutrafin. Indeed, they were before that indulging in affluence. Mutrafin are people that were, um, basically mutraf, you know, it comes from uh, Tarf, for example. And mutraf is somebody who has lots of ni'mah, has lots of blessings, and is neglectful of it, and was arrogant from those blessings, and was intoxicated by those blessings, and rebelled according to Lisan al Arab. Okay? So, mutraf is a person who has blessings. But they're intoxicated by it, they're often by it, they forgot, you know, what to do with these blessings. So the question here happen, occurs is that affluent, does that mean that everyone in hell had to be rich? And then they didn't use their they used their money in the wrong way and they entered hell? No, it doesn't mean that. Just as we just said, mutraf is a person that has a blessing. Now, regardless, this blessing doesn't have to be money. It could be time. They have a lot of time on their hands. And they wasted their time. They used it in the wrong way, haram way. Or they had health. They had health. They're healthy. They could go anywhere. And because of this health, the strength they had, they would go to the wrong places. They would use that ni'ma blessing in haram way. So it could be any blessing that God gives us. They were intoxicated by it. Or that maybe even youth, I was young and I was capable doing whatever I wanted. And instead of using this you know, young age and this energy you know, for the right way to study, to help people out, to worship Allah, 
and you know not to be tired from going to masjid to masjid you know to center to center I went to club to club to haram to haram so this now is from Ayatollah Maikara, I saw Ayatollah uh, Tawai in Al-Mizan. This verse explains why the people of the left hand are being punished, where before this refers to the description of their punishment on the day of resurrection. Mutrafin, affluent, means that the blessing they enjoyed in this world caused them to become proud and disobedient. This is because they become preoccupied with these blessings and forgot everything else. An affluent person is someone who is attracted to his worldly possessions. And whatever he benefits, he seeks to obtain th through them, regardless of whether he has a little or a lot. One cannot object that many of the people of the left hand are not in fact affluent in the sense of being materially wealthy. This is because the reality is that human being is surrounded by blessings from his Lord. Wealth is not the only blessing. So when we say that a person is distracted from the remembrance of his Lord by his Lord's blessing, this is referring to the comfort he receives from him. Comfort. You had lived your life in absolute comfort. You didn't thank Allah for this comfort. You didn't remember Allah. You forgot about him. Who gave you this comfort? Who gave you this enjoyable life? Therefore, the verse means we will only punish them in the manner we have described because before, when they were in this world, the blessing they enjoyed caused them to be disobedient. May Allah, inshallah, allow us the ni'mas that He has given us to really be ni'mas. The problem is the blessings in this world can easily be transferred to ni'ma and punishments and disgrace in the hereafter. So in the world, this was a blessing, comfort. It's a blessing, yes or no? Yes. But it caused me to rebel against God. It caused me to be as habul shima. Then that blessing became a nikmah for me, became something horrible. But sometimes we have nikmah in this world, something that we think is bad. It's a trial, a test. It is, you know, starvation. It is oppression. It is being bombarded, for example, by the oppressor. It looks horrible. It is a naqma and it is horrible. But you transform this naqma, this terrible thing, into a naqma, which causes you to grow closer to God. Therefore, it's a blessing now. And now you wish in the day of judgment, you say, Alhamdulillah for this. Now I make sense why I suffered so many years. God gave me rank. So I made naqma into naqma. These are for people that took naqma into naqma. I want at the end, because it's Ayyama Fatimi, yeah, to talk a bit about these affluent ones, Mutrafin. The people of Medina were in the same way. After the Prophet passed away, they were in the same way. And they had ni'mah. What ni'mah did they have? Rasulullah, his instructions. They had, obviously, wealth at that time. They had comfort at that time. They were the most powerful in Arabia. So they became the Mutrafin. And you see from this khutbah, Sayyidah Fatima, we have two popular khutbahs from her. Khutbah of Fadak that we have, Khutbah of Fadakiyah. And then we have the khutbah that is for the Nisa'ul Muhajireen Wal Ansar, for the women of Medina. Okay, I'm going to give some sayings from this khutbah, the khutbah from the women of Ansar. Because the Fadak, you've probably heard of it, and it's a good time for a time period for us to learn about it. But when it comes to this khutbah, people have heard it less. This khutbah is about talking to the women of Ansar. What if their men, what if the people followed Imam Ali? What Imam Ali would have done for them? And he's saying, he's, she's saying basically that what Imam Mahdi will do for us, Imam Ali Ali Salam would have done for them. It's a beautiful khutbah if you want to read it. I'm going to read some of it. لما مرضت فاطمة المرضى التي توفيت فيها اجتمع إليها نساء المهاجرين والأنصار. When Fatima became ill from you know the ill that eventually she passed away from from the wounds that she had the illness that was caused from these wounds, they asked her how are you doing daughter of the messenger of Allah. فقلنا لها كيف أصبحت من علتك Yabnata Rasul. How are you, daughter of the Messenger of Allah? 
Fahamidat Allah, mashallah, say the Fatima, the broken rib with the bruised arm, with the bruised head. She says, Fahamidat Allah, she thanks Allah. Fahamidat Allah was sallat ala abiha, thumma qalat, and then she does salat on her prophet, on her father, prophet, and says this. Asbahtu, they say, how did you wake up? Sub, sub means wake up. How are you? You know. So she says, I am like this. This is the way Fatima to Zahra wakes up. This is the way I am. Asbahtu wallah a'ifatan li dunyakun. I have been, I wake up or am in a way by Allah, I have been resenting your world. I resent your world. Imagine right now, I want you to look at the oppression and children dying in Palestine. And you start to hate the world in this manner, that this world is a world of oppression. This world is the world where it doesn't value human rights anymore. This world is a world that, as one of our scholars said, if you talk about human rights with me anymore, I'll throw my shoe at you. Because they're killing 15,000 people have been bombarded uh, you know, 6,000 of them children, 4,000 of them women, 7,000 of them missing in a tight area like Gaza, for example. So as I have been detesting, you're resenting your world. So when oppression comes so bad, you resent the world. And this is the interesting part for us. And detesting your men, I hate your men. The wives came to meet her and says, I hate your husbands. I hate your men. Why? Because they had na'ma. They had comfort. They had capability, power, and they became part of the mutrafin. They became part of those that didn't do anything. They didn't use that na'ma in the right way. They for forgot Allah. They forgot Ghadir. says, لَفَضْتُهُمْ بَعْدَ أَنْ أَعْجَمْتُهُمْ وَشَنَأْتُهُمْ بَعْدَ أَنْ سَبَرْتُهُمْ Saying that, I have cast them away, your men. After testing them, seeing them, watching them, she gave the khutbah of Fadak. They didn't listen. This is after khutbah of Fadak. I gave khutbah of Fadak. They didn't listen. Testing them and hated them after examining them. You know, the hatred of Sayyidah Fatima is the hatred of Allah. Thus, away with the men of playing after seriousness. Playing. You see today, Muslim countries, playing. Nobody's doing anything, for example. Or barely anyone's doing anything. فَقُبْحًا لِلْفُلُولِ الْحَدْ وَالْلَعْبْ بَعْدَ الْجِدْ MashaAllah, the speech that Sayyidah Fatima has, he gives, attributed to it. Thus, away with the men of playing after seriousness. They were serious during the time from now, they're playing for, for oh, power, for money, striking the soft rocks, slackening the spears, the foolish judgments, and the deviation of fancies. But I hate your men. I'm detested by them after testing them. May Allah... Make us of those that if we truly lived during the time of Sayyidah Fatima, we would give our lives for her and we would defend Imam Ali Islam as how she did. She did as much as she could. She gave everything she had for Walayat and was the barrier between the Zalimin, the oppression, oppressors, and Imam Ali. And she was the first Shahida for Ali ibn Abi Talib, her, and her unborn son, Muhsan. She sacrificed Mohsen and herself for the walaya of Imam Ali to fight against oppression, to fight against you know, what is wrong. And she is a great um, role model for us this, that this is how you fight against oppression. This is what you do. Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala ahli bayti al-tayyibin al-tahirin. ليس لوقعتها كاذبة خافضة رافعة إذا رجت الأرض رجا وبست